This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to check and adjust the height of the feed dog on a Singer Model 237. Now, the, the feed dog, and it is dog, singular, not dogs, plural. The feed dog is what drags the fabric under the presser foot. So I have the presser foot off so we can get a, you know a better view in here and I have the needle plate off so you can see the feed dog here and um, they, they have a height adjustment according to the factory that the factory feels is um, the right range and you may find yours to be too low or too high or you may find that you want to change it from the, the factory setting. For this machine, the height of the feed dog, meaning the little tip of the back teeth above the needle plate at a certain setting on the machine, which, which I'll show you in a little bit, it's how high above the feed plate it comes up. And on this machine, it's 0 0.40 to, no, 0 0.040 to 0 0.043 inches. Sorry, inches. And uh, above, above the needle plate. And let's say that the last person to work on it set it at the 0 .043 height because they were sewing, um, you know, maybe some felt or they were sewing uh, some thicker, softer material and they wanted more drag. And uh, even adjusting the pressure on the presser foot wasn't giving it to them. So they raised it up from the 040 up to the 043 or, or even higher. Or let's say somebody, uh, the machine was set at like a 042, but they had some layers. They were sewing a quilt or they were sewing something that was having trouble fitting under the presser foot. And... Um, when the feed dog went through so they wanted to lower it a little bit and you can lower or raise it a little bit out of the factory range and compensate by the pressure on the presser foot by the by the control knob up here to a certain extent now if if you raised or lower it a lot out of the you know changed it a lot um, you might have to, to reset the height of your presser bar, which I, I've shown you how to do in this series. And um, either way, it's, it's easy to check and it's easy to set um, the height, or reset it, raise it, or lower it. It's, it's not uh, hard to do. What what you need really is um, a gauge like this, and these blades all have different uh, inch settings or millimeter. And you know, I like if if I wanted this to be zero four one, I would take a zero one nine inch blade. Here and a, a 022. So that would give me a 041, which would kind of be uh, towards the middle range of the 040 to 043. Or if I wanted it uh, higher, I could take an 022 and an 020 and get uh, 042. So w w to test it, to check the height to see where it is there, there's a setting you should do on the machine and it's very simple 
and that is to lock it in on the number 12 stitch length. Okay, so we, we turn our con adjustment knob to the left, we raise it up to a little shadowy here, isn't it? We raise it up to the number 12, and then we'll lock it in by twisting it to the right, and we'll bring we'll bring the little point of that triangle on the stop right to the line at the 12. Okay, and you don't have to, you know. Uh, crank it down hard, you just crank it so it doesn't move. Just up against there. So that way uh, when you when you test this you, you are doing it kind of in the middle of the range. Then I <coughs> I would just out of habit put it in straight stitch and center needle. I don't think that's required because the feed dog doesn't move if you move the needle or if you're zigzag. The feed dog just lifts and and rocks. But it's just out of habit that I do straight stitch center needle. And then you want to rotate the hand wheel towards you because you want to bring up the feed dog to the to the highest point. And this feed dog, there's a few Singer models, and this is one of them. When when the this feed dog is at the highest point, it's not level. The teeth are not level. The back end is a little bit higher. These back teeth come up a little bit higher than the front teeth. So when when the back teeth are sticking out above. Mm, the needle plate at say um, zero four zero, the front teeth might only be at uh, zero three eight or something like that because the the dog doesn't sit flat; it sits at a little bit of an angle. So this is what we would call the back teeth on the dog back here, and those are the ones you want to measure for height. Okay. Now Singer said so you so you raise the needle. I'm sorry, you raise the feed dog until it's at the highest uh point. Let me get some good angle on here. It's at the highest point above the needle plate. Okay. And usually when you rotate it, you'll see it move to the front, start to rise up. Then it it's it doesn't rise anymore, and it starts to move towards the back to do its you know to do its feeding. So when it rises up and starts to head towards the back, that's usually at the highest point. And what I found consequently is that's also when the needle bar is at the highest point. So sometimes it's easier to see that the needle bar is all the way up than it is for you to tell if the feed dog is all the way up. So I'll I'll leave that up to you, but the high the, the feed dog the back end especially is supposed to be at the highest point above the uh, plate here. And look, I noticed I got a little problem with this. I don't have the screws in here. I just set it there to do this test. But look, when the feed dog moves, it's lifting the plate. So if I had this screwed in, look, you know, you'd be hearing a big clank, 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 and it would be, uh, it would be binding every time the feed dog came up and was hitting the bottom of the needle plate. But anyway, let's get this up. So I'll raise the needle bar and the feed dog all the way up and you would have your your plate screwed in and you want it all cleaned out under here and on the bottom of the plate because you want it to sit nice and flat and and because uh, this is you know how you're taking your measurement right and then you're going to put your uh, 
blades back here. Like I said, these two are going to give me an, an 041. And you want to set them on the back side here against the back teeth. Okay? And then you have to feel or look at it and say, is, you know, am I even with that height or am I below that height or am I above it? And I can feel, it may be hard to see in the video, but I can I can feel that my feed dog teeth, these back teeth here, are up above my 041 height. Yeah. So, I, I want to correct that, right? And I'm going to turn the machine over here and I'm going to show you some of these parts on the bottom. And I want to loosen a clamping screw to get these down below <laughs> so I can uh, screw my plate back in. Well, I'll tell you what, I can just do it like that and lower the feed dog and screw in my plate. Because you should have your needle plate uh, screwed in for this. Or the, the way I do it anyway, because I kind of set the machine, lay it on its back so that I can get one hand testing the height of the feed dog and I can get the other hand moving the feed bar crank to raise or lower the feed dog to the height that I want. Uh, you, you may find or know of uh, you know a different way to do this but this is just kind of how I've always done it and uh, it's worked for me pretty good I am going to try something a little bit different on this one but I'll get to that in a moment let me get these uh, get on the other side of that lift lever okay so I've got my plate need a plate all flat and smoothly installed which is what I needed to do okay so um, on the front of my machine now I've got it locked into the number 12 right okay so let me show you the let me show you the underside here some of these parts before I before I change anything Okay, how are we looking here? Pretty, pretty good. Okay, so that feed dog is screwed into a feed bar, a piece of metal. And the feed bar goes from these two shafts. And that's where it gets its movement. Okay. So this shaft here that the feed bar is bolted into at the bottom, this is the feed rock shaft. And it gets movement over here by that forked feed or feed forked connection. Okay, that I, I showed you on the feed video. And then this top shaft up here is the feed lifting rock shaft. So the feed rock shaft and the feed lifting rock shaft. And the feed bar, whoop, back over here, the, the, the feed bar that's uh, bolted on down here and goes up above the hook and has a crank connecting up here it's connected to those two shafts and there's a screw right here well you can't see that up there Let me back out a little bit yep. okay so the the feed bar crank goes to a roller attached to this top shaft which is the feed lifting rock shaft 
would be lifting rock shaft, right, which is turned by the crank connection rod. Comes down here from the main arm shaft. And then this lower one, the feed rock shaft, which is connected to the feed fork connection. That's how those two get their movement. And the and the uh, the feed bar is connected to both of those down at this end. And the feed dog screwed in up here above the hook into the feed bar. There. So now. We have this clamping screw right here that's, that's on the crank. And when that is tight and clamped, that's what sets the height of the feed bar and therefore the height of the feed dog. So when you want to adjust it, you just come in with a straight blade screwdriver and it's left to loosen. The, the clamp screw on the feed bar crank. That's it. Now you can loosen it completely and because that um, feed bar crank is on a little roller it gets real loose here. See that? So usually what I do is tighten it up enough that if I press firmly on the crank, I can change the height of the crank and the feed dog, and it will kind of stay there while I re-tighten the crank. So I want the crank, the clamping screw, loose enough to be able to move that crank up and down to do the adjustment but I don't want it real floppy maybe just a little bit more tight because you're already trying to be in two places at one time you're trying to be up on top of the height of the feed dog and you're trying to be down below here pushing the crank around and then tightening the clamping screw so let me set up here and find a good camera angle so I can show you those actions, maybe. Okay, I'm going to try this uh, view here for you to see about uh, setting this height. And what, what I've done is taken the two pieces that I call blades out of my feeler gauge. And I'm using the 0 0.019 and the 0 0.022 for a, so stacked together they're going to be a 0 0.041 which is the height I want to set this feed dog at. And about a month ago I had a nice suggestion from a viewer named Terry McLean. And, and he had watched a, another height setting video and had talked about what the possibility of using a third blade on top of any size so that when you when you had this and you wanted to be sure that your feed dog would would be right at the height of your blades if the third blade on top would slide off of the feed dog maybe you would be at the right height. And I like the idea of doing testing instead of, I mean, I've used fingertips and straight edges to try and, you know, feel like, is that at the same height? And of course, my finger's not flat, you know. So I'm going to try a variation of his suggestion in that I've, I've got this big blade from another feeler gauge, but you could use any kind of thin... Uh, flat piece of metal or even wood maybe but what what I'm going to do is get this uh, on top of the needle plate and butt it up against the back of the feed dogs 
and then I'm going to put this plate over the top of them. So here's what we see on the back side. And then I'm going to hold that in place while I come over to this side and I I I push on this crank and kind of like push the feed dog up against the bottom of that third plate. So I'm thinking the bottom of that plate on one side will be as high as the uh, point zero four one and then the the very top of my feed dog tooth will be at that same height. And then while I've got it there I'll take my screwdriver and I'll clamp down that clamping screw. I'll tighten up that clamping screw. And that seems uh, maybe it's going to be more accurate than than using my fingertip, you know. So I'm going to, I have my uh, presser bar lifted up. I've got the machine set at number 12 stitch length and I'm going to rotate my handbar so that my feed dog and therefore my needle bar come up to the highest point and that's all according to the factory service guide. Then I'm going to put my blades in there for my height, 0 0.041, and I can see my dog, I can easily see the dog is below that height. Oh, it's going to be hard to hold there. What if I push, hmm, how am I going to do that? See if I can get these up there. Okay. I'm going to push on that crank over here. See that? I'm going to push on that crank over here and and push up the blade. There, you saw it pop up maybe. And I'm going to slide the the two little blades underneath up against the back of those feed dog teeth and then I'm going to push down the whole thing until everything is flat against the needle bar and the feed dog is on the bottom of my big plate. Ooh, I think that's going to work pretty good. Yeah. Then I'm going to go take my screwdriver and I'm going to tighten that clamping screw pretty good. Not 100%, but pretty good so I don't want anything moving. Okay. Now I don't, I don't need my kind of like stopping plate. So I'm just going to take my two blades that and put them up there and eyeball it too and see it looks good. Wow I like that method Terry. I like using a third um, blade up there to have something for the feed dog to come up and hit. I feel really good that that's a zero for one height. Hey Terry McLean there you go. Thank you. So now, um, I'll come back over here with my clamping screw back here on the feed bar crank and I will tighten that at 100% because I sure don't want that moving around while I'm sewing and doing uh, normal activities. A nice firm tightening on that. <clears throat> then since I'm a little OCD I'm going to come back and just check that height uh, one more time. Make sure my, my stitch length is still set at 12 
and I'm going to make sure that my the feed dog is all the way up and in the needle bar too. And then I'm going to take my 041 blade combination, push it down hard on the needle plate and slide it up to the back teeth. Wow, it looks really good. Wow. Even rubbing my fingernail across the two, it feels good and even. So, you just want to remember to do your measuring back here because this feed dog can slope a little bit towards the front. So this will always be your high end and that's what you want to measure. Alright, so let me get this back up here. Now, um, <clears throat> if you'd like to know more about the feed system, the uh, including the feed regulator, which by this, by the 1970, when this machine was made, Singer was calling it, as most people called it, the stitch length regulator. And that's in, inside behind the cover plate, and that's how you set how long of a stitch or short of a stitch you want. And the device and called is really called the feed regulator. And I did a video all about that. And I will put a link to the playlist of all the videos I've done so far on, on Stella, the model 237. So you can go there and you can pick out the feed regulator or stitch length regulator video and, and see how to adjust it, clean it, and some of the parts, what some of the parts look like inside. Now, with this, um, as I said, depending on how much you have had to raise or lower this, um, you may need to change the height of your presser bar. I do a little test sewing first, and if you just changed it a, a small amount, I don't think you'd have to. I think if you raised it, you might say, oh, I, I just need a little less pressure, so I'm going to use the pressure adjusting thumb nut of the presser bar and lighten the presser. pressure. If, you, if this had been high when you set your presser bar, now you lowered it, quite a bit you might have to lower the presser bar a little bit and in that same playlist I'm talking about there is a video about setting the height of that presser bar as well as needle bar and a bunch of other videos I did on this model so like I said I'll put that right uh, at the what they call the end page of the video I can put a hot link and you just click on it and then for those of you on uh, computers or laptop, there's a dis um, description area below every video where I talk about what the video is and put links and I have to say what the music is if I got the music online for free and stuff. So you, I'll put the, the, the link to that playlist. Um, in there also and you're welcome to go to my home page you can subscribe to Andy tube if you want to be notified you know about new releases videos or you can just go there and and look at some of the 400 videos I have there now on the main playlist page for all my videos the playlists are set up by model number so uh, you could look for bottle 237 or 301 or 99K or 403 or 404 or 347 or whatever if you have an interest to see some of those other machines. But that's it for setting the height, checking and setting the height of the feed dog in relation to the needle plate. And 
again, I'll thank a uh, shout out to Terry McLean for that nice suggestion of, you know, what if you put a third pl uh, a third plate uh, on top of the other two and you could use it somehow to help set the height. And I couldn't see about sliding it because I thought, well, if I didn't push down hard enough or something, my plate might be higher by mistake and it slid off and said, oh, but this way by pressing all three plates with this one hanging over the feed dog, so when I push that uh, crank from underneath, I was pushing the feed dog up. Boy, that was sure easy, Terry. That was, that was a great suggestion. So come back uh, when you have time and uh, see some more videos on AndyTube. Thanks for tuning in and take care.